Good evening. Good Hi. evening. Hi, I am Nathan Chan, the Managing Director of Proud Fertility and Egg Donation and Surrogacy Agency in Canada. So good evening from you to you. This is my little daughter. What's your name? Nene. Okay, so we taught her something, I think. So first of all, who is this woman? What is she? A tummy mommy. Oh, Jessica. And what is a tummy mommy? Can you tell the camera? It's, it's Jessica baby for the, for the, the people, for somebody else. For somebody else? Yeah. Yeah, very good. Do you have a tummy mommy? Yes. What's your tummy mommy's name? Jessica. Very good. Okay. Yeah, okay. Go, go, go. See See you later. Bye. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us. And um, yes, indeed, you are a tummy mummy. Do you use that term yourself? On occasion, I have. Okay, perfect. Yes. So how many times have you been a tummy mommy? Uh, this is number two. Number two. Yep. Okay, Nanette, you have to go upstairs. Go away, please. Watching. No, go. Okay, so tummy mommy means um, you've You've been doing it twice? Yes. And do you have any children of your own? I do. I have one daughter. She's 15. 15? Well, and 15. are you pregnant right now? Are you... Is there something inside? Uh, yes. Let's stand up into the belly, everybody! <laughs> the belly. Let's do a belly bump. Let's do bump. And how many weeks are you currently? I am 37 weeks and 4 days. So anytime you might be having a baby. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us. We've never had you in the spotlight, mm -hmm. despite it being your second surrogacy journey yes. with Proud Fertility. Okay, so um, let's just jump right into some of your highs and lows. Okay. So let's start with like the, the, the highs. What are your favorite parts about being a tummy mommy? Well, I, I love being able to give back to somebody who can't necessarily build their own families and um, sorry. Somebody who can't necessarily build their own families naturally, so I'm being able to give back and help somebody create their own families. Because I'm done having mine, but I can still help somebody do theirs. Anything else that you like about being a surrogate or a tummy mommy? Uh, I love feeling little baby bugs move, so that's okay. always fun. Let's go right into what's your favorite trimester. Do you like the first trimester or the last trimester? I like a little bit of the second and a little bit of the third. The first is usually medications and you're tired, you don't feel good, and it's just, you're exhausted. The second, you feel really good, you're, you're going, you can do everything. And then obviously the third trimester where baby's kicking and you can feel, you know, the baby and you get to experience all the pregnancy stuff and share it all with the families. So, and then, I mean, there's labor and delivery. That's, that but is, that's the best part is being able to hand the baby over to their parents. Okay. And that's your favorite part? My favorite part is handing that baby over to their parents and seeing them become parents. And because you also have, don't have to be responsible for this. Oh, no, thing, I don't have to right? change any diapers. You just get to be a tummy mommy, and that is it. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs> and then they are happily on their way with their newborn baby. Okay, perfect. Let's go over to a little bit of your lows for your journey. And these are... Things that have been a little bit more sad or maybe disappointing. There have been lows in your different journeys. And yes. so you are, this is your second time being a surrogate and having a baby. Yes. Um, but have there been other journeys, for example? Yeah, um, I was with another couple before this and unfortunately the embryos just didn't take. It's 50-50 chance, unfortunately, and it didn't work. But I was so happy to help this family. So the lows, did you feel low when no. you didn't get pregnant? What were you yeah. feeling at that time? Um, I was feeling like my body had betrayed me because I carried such a healthy pregnancy with my daughter. It was frustrating not being able to carry, you know, be pregnant automatically. You just expect it to happen, right? You're like, oh, we're going through all this medication, all this, the rituals, everything, and it just fails. It feels like your body's failing you, but it's not your body. It's Did you feel like you failed yourself? Did you feel like you failed being to the parents? Did you feel like you failed? A little bit of everything. I felt like, honest, I really felt like I, I failed the parents. That was a big thing for me was not making, not being able to make it work because I know how much financially 
and emotionally it goes into, you know, their surrogates and, you know. It's, like a, it's, it's a dream to have a child. It is. Surrogacy and it's a lot yeah. of time and emotional and financial investment, absolutely. And us ourselves, we put a lot emotionally, we invest a lot emotionally into these journeys. It's not just a, you know, I, I'm here to have a baby. It's, you know, we're investing into another family. We're investing in our feelings, our children's feelings, and we're all getting to know each other. So, yeah. Now, do you have any advice for other surrogates or intended parents going through different kinds of lows? And that lows that we're talking about right now is actually unsuccessful embryo transfers. Um, have you, just things like that. So what kind of advice do you have, more high level overview for surrogates or intended parents? Um, honestly, uh, don't stress too much. It's really hard. It's not the best advice, but it's the only advice I really have is don't stress. It's what's going to happen will happen. Us surrogates are doing the best we can do with our bodies and our medications. We follow the rules, the guidelines that the, the doctors give us, and we just have to trust the process. Speaking about guidelines and doctors and medications, is that a low or is that a high for you? Oh, I'm not a needle fan, so it is a low. What kind of medication <laughs> did you do? Did you learn to do like, um, what kind of, what, what are the ways that you take medication? I guess you do injections, where? Yep. In, in your in your, arm? Hiney. in your bum? In your hiney. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yes, I did intramuscular injections into my bum with, uh, progesterone oil, okay. okay, progesterone and oil, and then there's also estrogen patches that you have to change out every couple days, oral medications, of course your prenatals, and any other medications that the, the doctors prescribe or suggest that you take to help make sure it's a healthy pregnancy. So medications for surrogates typically go up to 10, up to 12 weeks of gestation at the typical fertility clinic, and you were in that same range. I was 11, 11 weeks. Yeah. And then, so these medications are, do contribute to a little bit of the lower sides of this journey because you're kind of basically like forcing this body to yeah. pretend and trick it to be actually pregnant, to yeah. actually so suck even, up this little embryo. Yeah, even before you get like the, the positive or negative 8-beta HCG test, your body thinks it's pregnant because of the medications. So you can think that, you know, your body's reacting to a pregnancy, but you just never know until that later. Cool. So we talked about highs and lows. Um, how do people react to learning that you are a surrogate? Do you have any things that are funny that you could share with us? Do they all give you hugs and joys and tell you are the most amazing person? Some people do. Some people do. Um, I find it's different for every generation. So I find an older generation is definite, generally more cautious and ask a few more personal questions like how can you give up you know a baby that you've carried and you just have to explain to them that you know this is not my child biologically um, I am a gestational surrogate I am happily you know baking this baby for somebody for nine months I'm extreme babysitter extreme babysitter so next time we get in that on we will introduce that Next surrogate this is <laughs> an extreme. extreme babysitter yes. from TLC Live. <laughs> okay, and um, you know, talked about the lows and the different things. Um, you know, I would love to just tackle a little bit of surrogate reimbursements. Yeah. I've actually never been able to open up and talk a little bit about this in the in the different interviews. So thank you so much for agreeing to talk about that. What are some re what are reimbursements in general for surrogates? Like, what are they? Or, um, do surrogates just make a bunch of money and is that legal and what and have you ended up using reimbursements and have they been helpful uh, yes reimbursements are helpful because we want to be as healthy as possible in pregnancies and we need generally need help I myself am a single surrogate so I do not have a partner but I do have a child you're a single parent so I'm a single parent <laughs> You're definitely not two people. You're a single parent. I'm a single yeah. parent. Okay. Sometimes it feels like I'm two people, but um, <laughs> so I generally need a little bit of an extra assistance. I have two large dogs that I need help walking, especially when I'm pregnant in the winter, stuff like that. So what do you mean? You use these free reimbursements to buy a dog? 
No, I pay. I already have dogs. Okay. They're old. Okay. But I I pay somebody, and then at the end of every month, I submit my receipts after I've paid these individuals, and then I get reimbursed from the parents. Mm. And there was one this one time that you were ill, and you really just put them in a kennel for a little bit. Oh yeah. And, and so like that would be a an, uh, uh, an eligible expense. Like I had. It was, a reason, it was re reasonable. Yeah. Exactly. I had COVID. I couldn't. Just, yeah. COVID and pregnancy almost does not make a good mix. No, but the doctors all say we're healthy. So. Okay. So what other kinds of things have you? Can they? Can these reimbursements be used towards food and having and, and eating? Yeah. Uh, being pregnant, I choose healthier foods, and I automatically and healthier foods are more expensive as a general rule, but. Um, it's just my daughter and I eating at home, so I try and calculate the difference between what I would have been eating to what I am eating now, and the healthier foods, the more fruits, the more vegetables, more organic, stuff like that. And, and you can still eat a Big Mac, and that could be yeah. a reasonable reimbursement for um, you as a surrogate and as a, as a pregnancy related yeah. expense. Um, a lot of surrogates um, have told me that they start cravings. cravings. Did you have any special cravings? Strawberries and whipped cream. So we found yeah. a lot of those receipts and that were reimbursed <laughs> to you? Okay. Yes. Like there's 16 more extra cases of oh. strawberries for you. Yes, yes. There was a lot of, lot of strawberries and whipped cream. <laughs> okay, what about health-related things other than food? Could you, I know oh. that you are a very active woman and I want to commend um, this proud tummy mommy <laughs> that she did so much working out. It's not mandatory if you ever want to be a surrogate. Can still be a potato couch or couch yeah. potato, potato couch. Yes, well, <laughs> you can be a couch potato. <laughs> but I know that um, you were really trying hard to be super healthy. I was um, even more so this journey than your last. I felt so much better going to the gym, doing yoga. I I got a like, these things cost money. Oh yes. Okay, so what what kind of things? Gym memberships. Uh, gym equipment for at home when I can't make it to the gym. So like yoga mats and... Uh, you had a trainer for a little bit too. Yeah. Still mm -hmm. have a personal trainer. You know, we love trainers are going to whip in you in shape, but a trainer is also possible. Yeah. To like some prenatal fitness classes and some prenatal yoga classes. You're really good in that. You're really big on the group training. Yes. Yeah. So I like am not training. self motivated. <laughs> But you can also be self-motivated and maybe buy like different workout things or yeah. accessories. I think you have a, a bunch of other little things at home. Yeah, I've got like yoga balls, yoga mats. I've got some of like the yoga equipment. Yeah, Bosu. Bosu. So I mean, little things to help when you can't make it. And you even had that Fitbit that was also really helpful or that whatever you got right there. This is the Google, yep. Yeah. It's a Google one, but yep. Yeah. So it's been helpful to help you manage like other things too. Yeah, my um, head watches my heart rate. It wants. It, I keep track of my heart rate better. Because that. So that's just a little thing. sliver of the things that were reimbursed. At, at the end of the day, this is not payment for making a baby for someone because no. that is illegal in Canada. Yeah. It is a um, that would be considered commercial and paid. And we but, are not commercial. We yeah. are altru altruistic. Yeah. So it's an altruistic model of surrogacy yeah. and you are being reimbursed for things that you've been out of pocket that are considered very reasonable, accountable, yes. and um, in line with the yeah. regulations. Our Canadian government regulations. Exactly. Yes. So, um, and then there's, so, I mean, like, we don't love to touch on the money part, but I think it's nice that we touch on it and, um, you know, there are declarations that you need to attest that these are your expenses every month and are they helpful at the end of the day and, and tell intended parents and surrogates why we need reimbursements and it, it's a very i'm an intended parent and i'm very happy to reimburse <laughs> all three of my surrogates who have given me my my dream well the thing is, is we we put that money out as individuals and we take it from our families so it, and we need to have that help to create the better and healthier pregnancies uh, to help support their families, you know, their reality of becoming a family, right? So you're making a huge sacrifice yeah. and you're putting your sacrifice. I'm putting my own money out there yeah. initially and just getting it reimbursed. And this shouldn't negatively impact your family uh, financially either no. because, you know, that doesn't make an intended parent feel good, good at all. 
I don't know. either. Yeah. And so, if there's a surrogate that, that is watching right now and they might say to you, you know, proud tummy mommy right here, I feel guilty, um, you know, claiming these reimbursements, what would you say to them if there's any advice? Um, I would, well, always go with how, how you feel, obviously. Like, if you want to be, like, if you have the money to do it, then go ahead. But uh, in this economy, unfortunately, most of us don't have that kind of wiggle room, and we do need the reimbursements to have the healthier pregnancies. It mm -hmm. gives us a little bit more room to choose the healthier options. And even if you can afford it in this economy, mm -hmm. it's not something that you should be out. No. And um, and it, it's all written in a legal agreement. Yes. And, all four and pages. you know, it's all, it's very defined. Yes. And no one is taking advantage of either party. It's no. something that both parties, an intended parent and a tummy mommy, we have to agree will on. be agreeing on this. And they also have their independent legal counsel. Yes. Okay. So let's just end it up there, end it off there. Um, I wish you all the best. When are you expecting this baby to come? Next week. Can you share with our viewers if it's a girl or a boy or? Uh, it's a little boy. Little boy. Yeah, yeah, I know. So it's exciting. exciting. It's my first boy that I'm carrying, so. That's great. Yeah. So let's just do a sign off and see your belly one more time and do a belly bump. All right. So thank you so much. Whoa, I hope you all. It's very big, isn't it? So big. It's very big. Mine's really big too. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> See you later. Right, bye.